Guazi and hello, my name is Jeff Kai and I'm a documentarian and welcome to the Native American Food Sovereignty Alliance storytelling series. The Native American Food Sovereignty Alliance has been integral in helping communities develop programs that promote wellness and community health, develop youth voices, assert tribal self-determination, seed sovereignty and biodiversity, native chefs in the culinary arts, natural resources which include water and land, relationships with the natural world, sustainable economics and trade routes, intergenerational knowledge transfer, as well as culture and language. I was able to have a conversation with Louis Hina of Tsuke Pueblo, an instructor of the Indigenous Permaculture Design course, which I was able to attend last summer. Louis Hina is part of the Traditional Native American Farmers Association, which helps participants learn about natural resources, and in order to protect these resources, it also means asserting tribal self-determination through policy and community engagement. Great, we're here with Louis Hina. So I just want to say good morning to you, sir. Thank you again. It's always a, a pleasure to speak with you and have moments with you. Um, I just want to kind of pick your brain and kind of uh, get your thoughts on why this uh, Southwest Intertribal Food Summit is so important here. Well, I'm happy that uh, the National uh, Food Sovereignty Alliance is, is having their, their conference here. Um, we started the New Mexico Food and Seed Sovereignty Alliance in 2006. And so we created a, a, a seed declaration where we talked about protecting our food crops from genetic engineering, genetic modification of organisms. But it wasn't just for our, 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 our seeds, it was for the plants, the animals, the air, and uh, basically protecting our life ways. Um, we made a petition out of that declaration to get it signed so we could have a, a memorial pass at the state legislature. Um, we took it to Slow Foods, who was, uh, was signed internationally, and we had one individual sign it in his blood. And so that really sent a, a strong statement to us mm -hmm. as to how people felt around the world. And people are aware, you are aware, all you young folks are aware now of, of what's out there. And you have a choice either to go eat the bad food or grow your own. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys are making the right choices. Mr. Clayton Rakupe and I, he created, he started a, a, a steady, he completed a steady way uh, in the early 90s. And so there he found that our, our farmers were declining. <clears throat> At the same time, I completed the first air emissions inventory in Pueblo country, where we identified particulates as our major pollutants and carbon monoxide because of the highways bisecting our reservations. And so we took that data before the tribal council and we asked them, you know, I can bring in high-tech equipment to measure our problems or using Clayton's data, we need to teach our young men and women to go out there and plant the seeds. Mm -hmm. And I, I stressed to the councils, the elders, say, <clears throat> when you guys got out of your elementary school, you ran to your favorite fruit trees. You ran to your favorite watermelon patches. Well, where are they now? Mm -hmm. And so our communities are basically just bare, you know, uh, sterile. But as we learn, uh, we teach everything about our life ways, which you can't really learn anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And, and then you all go back to your communities, which is the best part, and start creating projects like this mm -hmm. and teaching the young people. Because well, one of the things I learned here in Taos Pueblo at Red uh, Willow Farm is, again, we're not only growing plants and seeds, but again, growing people. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, comes um, you know, full circle when we have the things that we care about and uh, want to preserve that, not only for us, but for future generations so um, for for this kind of closing part um, what are just some of your reactions to like the conversations or just the networking of people here you know what does that kind of evoke in you just seeing those people connecting again 
Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know, we like I said, way, way back when when we started, you know, none of the information was out there, and none of uh, these gatherings weren't happening. And now we have these gatherings. These young people are this this gathering right here. I'm, I'm amazed at all the young people here. You know, you guys are out here. You guys are, are connecting. You guys are, are, are talking amongst each other. So, and and you, you have the means to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm very happy to see that. I'm seeing the, the motivation. I'm, I'm hearing the vision statements of these young people here as to what they want to see in their future. And heck yeah, it makes me proud because we kind of set the foundation and now it's being built. Um, again, Lou, I just want to thank you for your words and your knowledge. It's always appreciated. And I'm going to be inviting you again to my dear dinner next time I'm home and live in this, this life ways again. So, um, so give it a good old chest beat for the, the audience to understand the power of this movement, right? So one, two. Yeah. Ah! yeah. <laughs>